Hollow Knight is a Metroidvania-style action-adventure game developed by Team Cherry. The game takes place in a dark and mysterious world filled with ancient ruins and treacherous landscapes. Hollow Knight's beautiful hand-drawn art style and hauntingly atmospheric music make for an immersive and unforgettable gaming experience, with challenging gameplay, intricate level design and a rich and fascinating world to explore. And here is the unofficial Hollow Knight RPG. So it's all about bugs in this adventure. So some art here that looks like the same sort of design as the game. How does rolling work? So it's a D6 system. A number of dice are rolled for each that comes up as 5 or 6 is a success. But there's also 0.5. Basically if you have like 5.5 you roll 5 dice and you can re-roll one of those dice. Might affects how much you can carry but shell affects how many belt slots you have. The number of belt slots you have is how many things you can have equipped. So then, yeah, belt size, Grace's dexterity, basically. So things like dodging, parrying, ranged attacks. Insight is how perceptive and intelligent you are. Hunger is how much you have to, like, eat in a day. And the bigger you are, the more you have to eat. And belly is how full you are at that moment. This will all become more clear. The table here shows hunger effects and how you get rid of hunger. Spook and cute is how you interact with other bugs, other players. Your speed is actually measured in squares rather than like feet because you're so tiny. Notches determine how many charms you have, which are a bit like expending spell slots. Heart, soul and stamina are pools which fluctuate as the game goes on. Heart pool is used for things like damage. Um, Soul is mana for spells that you dip into, and stamina is used for extra effort put into an action. And finally, stash is how many materials a bug has on them to use in quickly whipped up recipes. A stash pool is gained only when a path or other source creates it. So here we have building your bug. I believe there are three basic sizes of bug, and these are your starting stats. So the starting hunger here differs for each size, obviously, because the bigger you are, the more hungry you get quicker, almost. Uh, and traits that you can plug into these starting builds will alter that starting hunger. So you basically choose a template to start with, a uh, player chooses additional traits, each other for hunger value, a player bug may have up to seven traits, Unless traits are taken to change, these player bugs are assumed to be omnivorous and have two legs, two arms, and two to eight eyes. So almost like a skill tree for traits, there's sub-traits which can also have sub-traits depending on which tree you're working your way down. Such as if you picked crushing mandibles, okay, these are what it does, you can also level up to oversized mandibles from the start. Or there's exotic venom, horn, like this dude. Irritant bristles. Oh, they lodge into attackers within three squares. Natural projectile, crippling shot. You see, there's all sorts of things to choose from. A bit of a table for paralyzing venom. Pincers and then oversized pincers. So you'd have to get pincers and then like spend to get oversized pincers, even from the beginning. So you don't have to spend all your traits um, at the beginning if you didn't want to. Attribute traits, modifier bugs, attributes. These are allowed to be taken multiple times as part of a subtrait of themselves. Bookworm, plus one to hunger. Daydreamer, minus two to hunger. So you'd have to read through all these, but as you can see, there's plenty of choices, which means you can make quite a lot of different characters, which is also a good thing. As you can see here, there's actually over a hundred traits, which uh, really is customizable. Mental traits. So yeah, you've got physical, mental, physiological, alien body. Wow, there's actually absolutely so many things here. Movement traits, natural defense traits. Okay, we're on the paths. So paths would be like fighters or druids, and then ranks are how many levels you have in that. It says here, a fresh faced bug will generally begin with a one with one rank in a path of its choice. Path ranks represent a bug's understanding and skill with a particular approach to combat or magic and can advance to a maximum of three ranks. And when you reach major milestones, that's when you can be awarded um, additional notches. So there's no XP, you just get told when you level up by the DM. Martial Path, the nail, which you'll be familiar with if you have played the game. That is the, the starting weapon, which is kind of a sword. Needle is also relevant to a character in the game. Tusk, again, it's all weapons such as that. 
And that, so the, we flicked over there the martial weapons, and then there's mystic paths, which are more spell-focused, I guess. Cloak is more stealthy. Think of a rogue. Mystic paths, nightmare. Nightmare initiate. A flickering red glow surrounds you, giving warmth and light within a range of seven squares. The glow is normally invisible to others. All this is like based on the Grim Troop DLC. You don't need to worry about that. So there's Mystic Paths, that's all spells as we say. Plenty of options. Dust is the Necromancer, if that's your chosen play style. Proficiencies, okay. So these example proficiencies are just that, that look, they're almost like backgrounds in D&D. And you can actually make up your own and then have a word with your DM and think, well, if I'm a priest, I'll, surely I would be proficient in these kind of things. So it's worked out beforehand. That's, that's really good that you get to create them yourself. Same with skills. Um, you can just, like, make them up, really. Which is just so cool. These general weapon arts are, like, cool moves, like special moves. So you're not just hit, 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 hit. You know, you've got, like, good actions that do certain cool things. Lunge, for example. The user moves up to two squares in a straight line without provoking opportunity attacks and then makes a melee attack with a plus one bonus to damage because you lunged in. So here, if you spend an additional stamina point, you can basically move forward another square. There's, there's a lot to take in. There's a lot of things to read before you build your character because, but I mean, that's just, unfortunately, what the way we want it. We want more things to do rather than just being given almost pre-made sections. So this is quite good. Universal spell modifiers. The following methods may be used to modify any spell on the fly. A spell's range can be increased or decreased as listed on the table below. Spire was one of the mystic paths earlier. This is their spell list. So to cast this, for example, you'd roll your dice pool and have to get two fives or sixes to be successful. So look at these rituals. Uh, the casting time is ten rounds for this one, or one camp action, which I, I think means during downtime, during a, a rest. Um, in the game, you rest at benches. I don't seem to see any mention of those in here. Charms are small magical tokens, typically formed from a bug's dying wish. A bug can only equip or unequip charms while resting. A charm takes up a certain amount of notches. Geo. Geo is something like when Sonic drops his rings when hit. The uh, animals in the game anyway, in the computer game I'm talking about, they drop Geo that you collect and then you can spend on things. So it's kind of a currency, if you like. Geo is kind of the fossils of dead bugs in the game as well. And typically, as in any TTRPG, you have the damage, the range, how many handed, cost, and the bulk is how much it weighs, as we talked about earlier, what you can carry. It talks about having shields here as well, and you can almost turn your shield into a weapon and modify it. You have shield upgrades, and if you remember D&D, shield is a shield. This is like more inventive, this is cleverer. Well done. I do appreciate that this is all looks like in-game. I don't know who who actually did the artwork, but well done. Oh, it's just so much. Consumables, using stash, eating food. So yeah, it's just, you're living in a, in a bug world, and that is cool. Look at, the, all this is on the internet for free. I mean, it's just another example of the ingenuity of the nerd culture, which is fantastic. Look at these cons of casting spells, that they actually make sense, and they all add up to the, the correct number of squares, unlike D&D, &D, which you can actually lose some area by the weird way that it's done. So this game even incorporates pogo strikes, which if you have played the game, you'll know what that means. And this is a fairly simple sheet as well. Once you understand that might is strength, then you go, oh yeah, yeah, you've got lists of your traits, equipment, techniques, you know. If you've played any other game like D&D, &D, you'll understand what that is. So here's who we have to thank for this effort, and there is also a second little PDF come out, which is called Lands Beyond. And as a follow-up to the Hollow Knight RPG, we have this Lands Beyond PDF uh, with tables of how to set your game. Again, there's the credits. Applaud these people for doing the work and giving it out for free. Credit to Team Cherry for making such a inventive game in the first place. It's important to mention that this isn't system specific so you can use it in any other game that you play. 
It's a world to build. So building a kingdom, take a handful of dice, a sheet of paper, and you pour out the dice, and that is going to be your map. It's got a 2D map in the game, so you kind of scroll down the screen, it's like burrows deeper and deeper, like Terraria, I guess. And so that would be side-on rather than a 3D view. You're burrowing down, and yeah, clever. Then you name them, the Dreaming City, things like that. You know, these are all like from the actual game, or at least very close to it. So if you're arty, you can draw your map a little bit better. Rolling your D66 is a case of rolling two D6s, and these would be your results. Wild nature, wild form. These tables basically randomly generate what sort of world each individual spot is, like barrens or mountains, sea, cavern. Some are easier to traverse and some are more difficult. It's just clever. It's just, there's your roll table to, to set the area's type, which is pretty cool. Hopefully they'll do, you know, if they've done this much, they might as well do a little one shot or a bunch of one shots. Just uh, show them some love and show them that it's cool and maybe we'll do some more. So thank you to the creators and uh, we'll see you in the next video. A fresh faced bug will generally, a fresh faced bug will generally, a fresh faced bug will generally begin with one rank in a path. <laughs> <laughs>